So Bon Appetit has this like feel good food planned. I stumbled across this because I saw on my like YouTube featured trending pages there was the feel good food plan uh, for Bon Appetit's like creating lunches. And you may have seen this pop up before as well because of course Bon Appetit huge brand. I mean, they have like millions of subscribers on YouTube and millions of followers on Instagram. I'm going to be talking about my thoughts as a nutritionist of their fail good food plan and whether or not you should be following their advice too. All right, now let me just start off by saying I love Bon Appetit. So I might be a little bit biased because I do use a lot of their recipes as inspiration for myself for the, getting in the kitchen and making something cool too. And in case you are wondering why you should be listening to me, I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's in nutrition and human performance. And you can check out a lot of my articles on various nutrition and wellness topics on my website at autumnmalnutrition.com. Information below. Just from initially scrolling through this, a lot of these meals look beautiful. I mean, it's Bon Appetit, so of course, it's gonna be beautiful. Definitely inspired by a lot of fancy restaurant -y types of meals. <laughs> But one trend I'm noticing as I'm flipping through this is the real emphasis on real food. So already it's off to a pretty good start. And P.S. The tahini ranch that they have on there. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. I'm going to be trying that ASAP. But let's take a real deep dive look at the recipe. See if it's something that really would help with feel good food plan. But I guess first thing first, you have to decide what's your goal with this feel good food plan because whether or not something works really depends on what your initial goal is in the first place, right? So if your goal is just to feel good, which in my opinion, that might mean increased energy levels, no bloating, getting good sleep. And that's one thing. If if maybe it's weight loss, that's another. Decreased anxiety. There's so many different things. So that's the one concern I already have with this is there's no focus. Now that's totally fine if you're not looking to really have a focus, I guess. But in my opinion, from what I've seen with my own clients, it's always best to have some type of goal in mind, even if it is just to know that you want to increase your energy levels or you want to get better sleep or you want to lose weight. It's just good to have a goal. So let's just go under the assumption that Feel Good Food Plan is aiming to help you with increase energy levels and maybe lose a little bit of weight too. So this first recipe I'm looking at is called the salmon and broccolini with citrus chili sauce. I mean, that's, that sounds great to me. And it mostly is just salmon with some broccolini. The initial red flag I see here, the biggest problem with this, is that a lot of people think that in order to feel good or to lose weight, you have to just eat less in general. And having this mentality can sometimes get you into trouble with hormone balance. Talk a lot about this in these series videos, so you can check that out. But combined lower calorie eating with lower fat as well can really disrupt your hormones and make it actually more difficult to lose weight and make it so that you are just hungrier more often, which in my opinion isn't something that makes you feel good. I don't like to feel hungry. So although this salmon and broccoli sounds really good. It still is it's lacking something. It's not a full meal. So I think that will leave a lot of people hungry. What would be great, especially if this is a dinner, is to pair this with a little bit of sweet potato. Talked about this in a few videos in the past, but having a starchy carb specifically at night at dinner time helps to make it so that you can decrease your cortisol levels and so that you can go to sleep better. And that makes it so it's easier during the day, during the next day, to tap into your fat burning mechanism and to have lower ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone. Okay, now let's look at the feel good food plan video that popped up on my trending page on YouTube. This is what initially caught my eye. In this video, there's a lot of meal prep going on specifically for lunches. There's really two main meals that are going on. So there's the chickpea salad and there's also the chickpea smash sandwich. Biggest plus for me here from the start is the fact that he's making and promoting the chickpeas from scratch. Now, this is super important for all beans because it helps to reduce the factor that causes bloating. So there's this outer layer on beans of oligosaccharides. It's a type of carbohydrate that our body has a difficult time processing because we don't have the enzymes break it down. Well, that leads to the bacteria processing it and making it so that it's fermenting, aka just like bacteria farts, and that leads to bloating. So I'm actually soaking some kidney beans right now for this black lentil kidney bean doll I'm doing tonight. You can kind of see how some of the skin is coming off on the side. That soaking process, just make it so it gets rid of a lot of that outer layer, that outer oligosaccharide layer that can cause bloating. So the fact that he's promoting that, it's an A plus out of my book. But the fact that he says like the sandwich is all protein, I mean, beans do have a good amount of protein. It can be a good protein source, but it's not like packed with protein the way that a lot of people think. It can provide a good amount so that vegans and vegetarians can get protein from that in order to satiate their bodies. But with this type of recipe he's talking about, I mean, half a cup of cooked chickpeas has about seven to 10 grams of protein. And then if you include the yogurt that he's talking about will have anywhere again between five and 10 grams of protein. So we're looking at 12 to maybe on the upper side, depending on how much yogurt he used, 20 grams of protein from this meal. And that's with, you know, like a higher estimate of yogurt because it really doesn't per serving look like he's using 
that much yogurt. I'm really erring on the side of he's using more. It's probably closer to that 12 grams of protein count. Now, depending on your fitness goals and your activity level, you'll want anywhere between 1.4 and 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Sounds all really sciencey, I know, but just to give you an example, a 130 pound woman is about 59 kilograms, I believe. Let me just double check that. Uh, yeah. It's about 59 kilograms. So that means about 83 to 106 grams of protein per day for somebody who weighs 130 pounds. Now for this chickpea sandwich lunch, this being about 12 to maybe 20 grams of protein, this is even on the lower end, maybe a quarter of the protein that somebody would need per day. It's not packed with protein. It still isn't even like a third of the amount of protein that you need in a day. But that's just a little nutritionist tick. It, it does have a good amount of protein, plant-based protein and protein from the yogurt, but it's not like having a piece of chicken or something. Not that I'm advocating one over the other, just nutritionist tick. <laughs> In general, from what I'm seeing with a lot of these meals, it, they really are focusing on real whole foods. So chickpeas, broccoli, salmon, various greens, olive oil, except it does mention grapeseed oil. Grapeseed oil, I'm a little iffy on. The grape seeds are so small, in order to extract the oil from it, it's a different process than something with olive oil, where you just smash olives and you can get the oil. With grape seeds, since the seed's so small, it can require a hexane, which is a type of chemical that has been found to be carcinogenic. Granted, when they take that oil, they remove the hexanes, but there can still be trace amounts left behind. So I like to just go for the fresher type of oil with the olive oil. So they do recommend olive oil and grapeseed oil. If you're gonna do that, just go for the olive oil. Now, in general, I love the emphasis on whole foods. I love the emphasis on homemade cooking because again, that's where you really know what's going into your food and you know that you're not getting preservatives or additives. But I would like to see larger serving sizes in order to turn off hunger hormones and some more healthy fats in there, a little more variety of healthy fats too. Because again, those will help to turn off hunger hormones, make it so that someone stays satiated, balance your hormones in general, and that's feel good, in my opinion. All right guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, it really helps support my channel. And if you like getting down to like the nutrition nerdy science paired with holistic nutrition, make sure you hit subscribe. I have new videos coming out every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, until the next video, I'll see you later, bye.